It's Easter Sunday. He is risen. Good morning, Trinity. Hallelujah. 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 Wow, what a day. What a day to celebrate. It is the most awesome day in our Christian beliefs. On Good Friday, I took time to reflect. And as I was reflecting in the hour of our Lord's death, those nails that pierced his hand should have pierced mine. That beating he took should have been mine. But he stood for me. And as I was reflecting, I almost was thinking of Jesus as a victim. But then I realized he was a willing participant. And God took me to John, where Jesus was talking about the good shepherd. But the most powerful words he spoke were these. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down and the authority to take it up again. This commanded I received from my father. So remember, Jesus was not a victim. He did it for you and me. We were at that cross and we should have been flung on it. But he pushed us out of the way and said this. I love you this month. So stand to your feet because guess what? The cross is empty. The stone has been pushed away from the grave. He's here. He's now. He's today. He is with us. Let's praise him. Let's join with heaven today and rejoice. He lives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We should all be happy because he did what we couldn't do for ourselves. Take the pain away. You take the pain away. 
This day is from Luke 24, verses 1 through 8. Let's read it together. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the scepter, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the scepter. And they entered it and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth. They said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. This is the time that we have all to prayer. So we invite you to come and join us as you're coming. We will sing. God is here. The scripture said he's not here. He is risen just as he said he would. So we invite you to come to pray for yourself or to pray for someone else. If you want to stay where you are, grab the hand of someone next to you as we lift him up and we pray. the top there is a sweet anointing Sunday. It's the day that seems all the world stops and pays attention to the truth. If only for a minute they stop and they consider the claims of not the cross, but the claims of an empty tomb. It's the day that they stop looking at us and they look in us for the one that we proclaim. 
so I was kind of thumbing through the Bible this morning trying to figure out what the most appropriate scripture would be to read this morning to you and it occurred to me they're all appropriate because they're all about him. Hallelujah. So I said, well, since this is the day that we're especially joyful and since this is the day that everybody stops and pays attention, let's go ahead and go to that scene in heaven where the lamb that was slain is seated on the throne and all of heaven is doing all the time what we stop to do just today. In the fifth chapter of the book of Revelation, verse 9, it says, And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and as such as are in the sea, and all that are in them I heard saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. If not today, then when? If not today, then when will you cast aside any inhibitions, cast aside any sense of what proper decorum might be. If not today, then when might you just stop and for a moment say, Lord, thank you. Lord, we praise you today. Lord, we give you the praise of our lips. We give you the praise of our hands. Lord, we give you the praise of our hearts. Lord, we offer to you the praise of our lives, Lord. If any man glory, if any man boast, let him boast in the Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you, 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 Lord. Thank you for Jesus Christ, Lord. Thank you for that sinless life. Thank you for that example of holiness, of godliness. Thank you for that sufficient sacrifice. Thank you for the voluntary atonement, God. Thank you, Lord, for our claims. And Lord, we only claim what you've told us and taught us, and that's that your son came into the world. Your son lived a perfect, sinless life. Your son voluntarily laid that life down, Lord, to, to accept the punishment that we so richly deserve. It's because of him that we can thank you for forgiveness. It's because of him that we can thank you for new life. It's because of him that we can thank you that we try to do better even as we try to know better. Thank you, Lord, that every day because of him we can grow in the grace and knowledge of him. Thank you, Lord, because of him, we have the comforter that's come to, to dwell in us and to reside with us, to lead us into all truth. Thank you, Lord, that because of him, Lord, his followers went to all the extremities of the earth, Lord, and, and took the good news, and that good news made its way into our heart one day. Thank you that because of him, we have a place to gather today and not just gather as strangers or or casual friends and acquaintances, but we have a place to gather as brothers and sisters, as sons and daughters of the living God. Thank you, Lord, that because of him, that even though we're not perfect, we're being perfected. Thank you, Lord, that because of him, Lord, the good that we would do is trumped by the good that he tells us to do, the good that he teaches us to do. Thank you, Lord, that because of him, Lord, this is not the end for us, but because of him, because he lives, we will live. Thank you that because of him, the words, I am the resurrection and the life, mean something powerful in our lives. Lord, thank you that because of him, we can tell people a dying world of a loving God and a saving son. Because of him, Lord, there is hope in this world. 
Because of him, Lord, there is ministry, Lord, that's not for self, service that's not self-serving. So, Father, we present ourselves anew this Resurrection Sunday, thanking you for the new life that you've granted us. Thank you for the transformation that's taking place. And, Lord, we present ourselves anew as living sacrifices, saying, Lord, have your way in us. Have your way, God, in our conversations. Have your way in our marriages. Have your way in our homes. Have your way in our jobs. Have your way, Lord, in every aspect, in every avenue of our lives, Lord, that all might be done to your glory. God, have your way in this church, that we might be the light that's on the hill, that we might be that beacon to the world that's looking for an answer, that we might always lift up Jesus as that answer, as the only answer. God, we pray for those that are struggling today, struggling with whatever dependencies they have, struggling with whatever questions they have, struggling with whatever difficulties they have, Lord. We lift up the one that's struggling with disbelief today, that wants to believe the story, but doesn't feel moved to believe that story. Lord, touch them today. Touch that one that swears in his heart that you don't exist. God, be the preach message today. Stand up in your preacher today that that gospel message is presented powerfully in a way that convinces that one to come forward and say, Lord, I believe. What must I do to be saved? Lord, in the meantime, there are so many of us that have come to the altar with circumstances that need your superintending. God bless everybody that's trusted you enough to come and talk to you about their issues. Bless them, Lord, knowing that you hear them, just as you heard the cries of your people in Egypt, just as you've always heard the cries of your people. Let them know, Lord, that they are not alone, that you have not forsaken them, O oh God. And let them know that you have proven in no less way than an empty tomb that the impossible is possible with you. And Lord, we start with that promise. We start with that reality that with you all things are possible. And Lord, we trust you for the outcome in every situation that we bring to you today. Thank you, Lord, again for Jesus. Thank you for Easter Sunday. Thank you for the resurrection. Thank you that he's real in our hearts, God. We praise you today. In Jesus' name, amen. was watching this morning they're trying to figure out with all the popularity of the Bible you know what's going on so many people are watching it it's breaking records I'm like I don't know why y'all surprised because God is real hallelujah the Bible's been there forever Woo! <laughs> if you're not I'm gonna ask you to stand and join us in our congregational hymn glory to his name